I'm coming on to talk to you about what the Lord has laid on my heart to share with you here. This word is for those of you who have not asked Jesus to come into your heart and to be your Lord and your Savior. So we're going to go over some scriptures tonight. So the first thing I want to do is to ask you a question. Have you ever been born again? And you might say, Tina, I don't know what born again even means. Well, I want to share you a story with you that's in the Bible, and it comes from the book of John in chapter 3. And I'm going to start with verse 1 through 21. This story is about a man named Nicodemus. Now, Nicodemus was a Pharisee. So let's find out what is so special about this man, Nicodemus. It says, now there was a prominent religious leader among the Jews, and his name was Nicodemus, who was part of the sect called the Pharisees. One night he discreetly, that means he did what nobody did know, came to Jesus and said, Rabbi, which means teacher, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one performs the miracles and signs that you do unless God's power is in them. So Nicodemus, first of all, had noticed that, for one, that Jesus was a teacher. But he was also noticing the power that Jesus was operating in because he said, For no one performs the miracles and signs that you do unless God's power is with him. So as Nicodemus has been watching Jesus, he's seeing the power of God. He's seeing the miracles that are taking place through, through what Jesus is doing and saying that he wanted to pull away, away from religious ideals, religious ways of thinking about things. He wanted to pull away and he wanted to privately talk to Jesus. So Jesus answered Nicodemus. Listen to this eternal truth. So listen, you're fixing to hear an internal truth that he wants you to hear. Before a person can even perceive God's kingdom, they must first experience a rebirth. A rebirth. So King James says, except a man be born again. In the Passion Translation I'm reading, it's saying rebirth, but it's it's being born again. And so this is the word that we're using, being born again. What do you mean being born again? So Nicodemus said rebirth or born again. What are you talking about? How can a gray-headed man be reborn? born. It's impossible for anyone to go back into the womb a second time and be reborn. Jesus answered, I speak an eternal truth. Unless you are born of water and the spirit, you will never enter God's kingdom. For the natural realm only gives birth to the things that are natural. And we live in this natural realm. But the spiritual realm gives birth to supernatural life. Let me read that again. But the spiritual realm gives birth to supernatural life. You shouldn't be amazed by my statement. This is Jesus speaking. You all must be born from above. For the spirit wind blows as it chooses. You can hear its sound, but you don't know where it came from or where it's going. So it is the same with those who are spirit born. You know, I've said this in teaching before. Whether you've experienced this rebirth or experienced the phrase of being born, born again, 
You need to understand that you are a spirit being. Whether you're born again or not born again, you are a spirit being living in a physical body. Okay? Nicodemus replied, I don't understand what do you mean and how does this happen? Jesus answered, Nicodemus, aren't you the respected teacher in Israel? And yet you don't understand this revelation? I speak eternal truths about things I know, things I've seen and experienced. And still you don't accept what I reveal. If you're unable to believe what I told you about the natural rim, what will you do when I begin to unveil the heavenly realm? No one has risen into the heavenly realm except the Son of Man who also exists in heaven. And just as Moses in the desert lifted up the brass replica of a venomous snake on a pole for all the people to see and be healed, so the Son of Man is ready to be lifted up so that those who truly believe in Him will not perish but be given eternal life. For here is the way God loved the world. He gave his only unique son as a gift. So now everyone who believes in him, see that? For here is the way that God loved the world. He gave his only unique son as a gift. So now everyone who believes in him will never perish, but experience everlasting life. God did not send his son into the world to judge and condemn the world, but to be its savior, to rescue it. So God sent the world a savior to rescue it. So now, there is no longer any condemnation for those who believe in him, but the unbeliever already lives under condemnation because they do not believe in the name of the only Son of God. And here is the basics for their judgment. The light of God has now come into the world, but the people loved darkness more than the light because they want the darkness to conceal their evil. Let's read that again. The light of God has now come into the world, and that light is Jesus. But the people loved darkness more than they love the light because they want the darkness to conceal their evil or they want the darkness to conceal their sin. So the wicked hate the light and try to hide from it for the light fully exposes their lives. But those who love the truth, come on, will come into the light. That is really powerful. But those who love the truth will come into the light. And that light is Jesus. For the light will reveal that it was God who produced their fruitful works. Amen. And that's John chapter 3, verse 1 through 21. And so that's the story of Nicodemus. So Nicodemus goes to Jesus where no one knows that he's going to talk to Jesus. And he approaches Jesus and says, I've watched you. I've seen the miracles 
that you have that you've done so i know that god is with you would not be able to do these miracles without god being with you right and so jesus begins to speak to nicodemus so jesus said nicodemus aren't you a respected teacher in israel and aren't you with the pharisees which were religious leaders of that time and you don't understand what i'm talking about rebirth and then jesus goes on to say the light of god has come into this world right and people love the darkness people love the darkness because it hid their evil ways they didn't want it exposed but then he encourages us to say but those who love the truth and this is in verse 21 but those who love the truth will come into the light for the light will reveal that it was god who produced their fruitful works and then i'm going to read verse 3 of john 3 i'm going to read verse 3 and it says this is in the niv it says jesus replied Verily, verily, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Jesus is saying, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. And as he shared that with Nicodemus, remember Nicodemus was like, how can I enter into my mother's womb a second time? And Jesus said, I'm talking about eternal. I'm talking about a spiritual birth, a spiritual born again, right? And then in the New Living Translation, it says, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. And then in the New King James, it says, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So you must be born again. Okay? So Jesus was sent into this world to take on our sins. He was the Son of God who had not sinned and was crucified for our sins. Jesus died. Jesus came into this world to give his life freely for our sins. And Jesus knew no sin. And I'm going to read some scriptures to you about who you are and what you need to do to be born again. I'm going to start in Romans 3. 23 it says for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of god again for all have sinned well just so no all everyone if you are in this world you were born into sin because of the fall with adam and eve when sin entered into the world, right? So, for all have sinned. So we can't say, well, I haven't sinned. We all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And then Romans 6, 23 says, for the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. For the wages, if we all have sinned, and then the wages of sin is death, it's telling us, Jesus has given us a free gift from God of eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Because why? Because Jesus is the one that paid the price for the removal of our sins. And then in Romans 5, 8, 
But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Glory to God. I'm going to read that again. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So, so far we're, we're learning that every person is a sinner. We can receive eternal life as a free gift. And that God loves us even while we sin. And we all need to accept Jesus as Savior and Lord. And then in Romans 10, verse 9 through 10, if you confess with your mouth, that means out loud, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For the word of God says, with the heart one believes and is justified. And then with the mouth one confesses and is saved. So we believe in our heart in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he came and died on the cross for our sins, that he paid the price and accept him in and then confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, we shall be saved. So our assurance of salvation is in Jesus. And then Romans 10, 13 says, everyone, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Everyone who calls on on the name of the Lord will be saved. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And this prayer is going to consist of one, we're going to address the Father, and then we're going to acknowledge our sin, then we're going to repent of our sin, and then we're going to acknowledge Jesus Christ as Savior, and then we're going to admit that nothing can pay for sin except Jesus, except the blood of Jesus, because Jesus shed his blood on the cross. That was the ultimate sacrifice for our sins. So Jesus shed his blood. So we're going to admit that nothing can pay for our sins except the blood of Jesus. And then we're going to ask for the Holy Spirit to come and dwell us. And then we'll praise God for salvation and thank God for our salvation. So as you are listening to this, if you're wanting to be born again, I'm going to lead you in this prayer. And as I pray this prayer, I want you to pray this prayer with me. All right. Say, Heavenly Father, I come before you admitting that I am a sinner. I do a lot that is wrong or evil. I cannot do anything good in my own power. I need your love and your forgiveness. Lord, I am sorry for all the sin that I have committed in my life and that I know I will commit in the future. I want to live my life for you, do what is right and pleasing to you. I need a savior because I can never pay the debt that my sin has incurred. Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross and shedding your blood 
to pay the price for my sin. I accept that you did this for me and I ask that you extend your eternal grace to me. Lord, please transform my heart and my life in your image. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life and fill me and seal me with the Holy Spirit. I praise you for your love, your righteousness, and your mercy. Thank you for hearing me, saving me. In Jesus' name, I pray. I ask you to fill me with your fire. I believe as I've prayed this prayer, I receive. Now, if you just prayed that prayer and you believed it with your heart, you are born again. If you believe that Jesus died for your sins, that he was the sacrifice for your wrongdoing and accept him into your heart, you are a child of God. Now, you need to go forward and you need to get your Bible. And I suggest you start in the book of John. Learn about Jesus. Learn what Jesus did. Learn about his life and how he lived his life so that you can go forward and live for him. Let him guide you. You're going to hear his voice. You're going to experience his presence. But you're also going to experience the enemy coming after you hitting you, telling you that nothing happened, that nothing changed. And I'm telling you now, heads up, glory to God, that's a lie. The enemy saying that to you is a lie, except that you've just asked Jesus. You've just said, Jesus, basically come into my heart. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Be my Lord and Savior. Amen. And deliver me. Deliver me from my enemy. Amen. Glory to God, I celebrate with you because when you just now got born again, the angels in heaven were rejoicing that you have come home to the Father because you came from the Father. He put breath and life into you when he created you and put you in your mother's womb. Hallelujah, glory to God. So you are in the family of God. So I say welcome to to the family of God. And if you need some help, let me know in the comments and I'll get resources to you to help you on your way. I'm so happy and I rejoice in your decision that you've made today. So let me have a word of prayer with you before I let you go. Amen. Father, I come to you in Jesus' holy name, Lord. I lift this individual up to you right now that just prayed this prayer. Father, they just asked you to come into their heart and to forgive them of their sins. And Lord, I pray that you would just wrap your loving arms around them. Let them feel your presence, Father. I ask you to guide and direct their steps, Father. Show them where you want them to be. Show them where you want them to go to church. Father God, I ask that you would help them change their environment. Change those that they hang out with, Father God, that would pull them in a direction that is not good for them. Lord, I bless them. I bless them in your holy name, Jesus. And Father, I thank you that only you can touch a person's heart. And I thank you, Father, for touching this person's heart in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so now I want to give you some instructions. If you prayed that prayer and you asked Jesus to come into your heart and to forgive you of your sins, you are now born again. If you were to die tonight, you would go to heaven. Amen. So these are some of the instructions that you need to know. I want you to first tell someone about what happened to you. I, you need to tell somebody. You need to, you need to make a confession of your faith by telling somebody, I want you to know what I have done. I have prayed and I've asked Jesus into my heart. Okay. 
And then I want you to start praying and praying simplified is just talking to Jesus. So how would I do that? Just say, Jesus, I need you. You just talk, talking to him, whether you sit down at a table or your bed, and you just picture that Jesus is sitting in front of you, and you say, Jesus, I want you to tell me what I need to do. Thank you for hearing me when I asked you to come into my heart. You're going to begin to hear the voice of God. He's going to begin to speak to you. It's not going to be an audible voice, but it's going to be inwardly, and you're going to know that it is Him. Amen? Then you need to find a church in your area that teaches the Bible. And I would instruct you to find a church that is a spirit-filled church, meaning they believe in the gifts of God, amen? And they believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because the next thing that you need to do is you need to be water baptized, okay? So wherever you find that church, you need to go to the pastor and you need to tell him that you've asked Jesus in your heart and that you want to be water baptized, okay? And then you need to pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You need to ask Jesus to fill you with the Holy Spirit with evidence of tongues, amen? And next, you need to find friends or you need to make friends with those who have been born again, okay? So you need to make friends, find friends of those who have been born again because they will help strengthen you and encourage you in your walk with the Lord. And you can also watch the videos here on this channel because we have Bible study every week and then I put it I put it on this channel for people to be able to watch and to be a part of and to grow in their relationship with the Lord. And then you need to ask the Lord, what do you want me to do for your kingdom? Okay? So I am just, I can't express to you how happy I am about your choices that you've made through this prayer. I, I'm just so happy and I really want to hear from you. I want you to be by yourself. I want you to be encouraged. I want you to feel the love of God. Amen. All right. Thank you so much. Love you. Bye.